On June 26, 2024, ESET researchers stumbled upon a post in an underground forum advertising a zero-day exploit for Telegram for Android. This exploit, which the researchers named Evil Video, was a malicious app disguised as a video that could possibly infect your device. But how does this work? Let's find out. In this video, we'll explore how a clever exploit turns seemingly harmless videos into Trojan horses, potentially infecting countless Android devices. So, let's get started. Our story begins on June 6, 2024, when an advertisement appeared on a Russian-speaking hacker forum that caught the attention of security researchers worldwide. A threat actor, going by the name Ancrino, was offering something rare and valuable, a zero-day exploit targeting Telegram for Android. Now, for those unfamiliar with the term, a zero-day exploit is like finding a secret entrance to a fortress that nobody else knows about, not even the fortress's builders. It's a vulnerability in software that hasn't been discovered or patched by the developers, giving hackers a golden opportunity to wreak havoc. This particular exploit promised to turn harmless-looking video files into Trojan horses, capable of delivering malicious payloads right into users' devices. This particular zero-day exploit later dubbed Evil Video by ESET researchers, was a true wolf in sheep's clothing. It allowed attackers to send malicious Android payloads, essentially dangerous apps, disguised as innocent video files through Telegram channels, groups, and chats. After a careful analysis, the researchers dubbed the vulnerability Evil Video. The ESET team confirmed that Evil Video affected Telegram versions 10.14.4 and older on Android devices. Let's break down how this sneaky exploit worked. Normally, when you receive an app file through Telegram, it's clearly labeled as an application. Your phone knows it's not a video or an image and treats it accordingly. But the evil video exploit cleverly tricked Telegram into displaying these malicious APK files as 30-second video clips. By default, Telegram automatically downloads media files when you open a conversation. This means that if you had this setting enabled, and let's be honest, most of us do it for convenience, you'd automatically download the malicious payload as soon as you open the chat where it was shared. But surely, you'd notice when trying to play the video, right? Well, the attackers thought of that too. When a user attempted to play the fake video, Telegram would display a message saying it couldn't play the file and suggest using an external player. This is where the trap was sprung. If an unsuspecting user tapped the open button, they'd be prompted to install what they thought was a video player app. In reality, they'd be installing the malicious payload. The exploit required users to enable the installation of unknown apps in their device settings. This additional step did add some friction to the attack, potentially reducing its success rate. The exploit was first advertised for sale on June 6, 2024. ESET researchers discovered it on June 26, and Telegram finally patched it on July 11. That's over a month, where this zero-day exploit was potentially in the wild, ready to be used by anyone willing to pay the price. Following responsible disclosure practices, ESET immediately reported the vulnerability to Telegram on June 26. When they didn't receive a response, they reported it again on July 4. This time, Telegram responded the same day, confirming they were investigating the issue. The researchers at ESET speculated that the payload was likely crafted using the Telegram API. This API allows developers to upload specifically crafted multimedia files to Telegram chats or channels programmatically. In other words, the attackers found a way to manipulate this API to make malicious files appear as innocent videos. The exploit didn't actually alter the malicious app itself to make it look like a video. Instead, it exploited the upload process to make the file appear as a 30-second video clip in Telegram chats. This clever manipulation meant that the actual malicious payload remained intact, ready to be executed once installed on a victim's device. The sample that ESET researchers analyzed was detected as androidspy.spymax.t, a type of spyware. This kind of malware can potentially steal sensitive information from your device, including passwords, financial data, and personal messages. This exploit could theoretically be used to deliver any type of Android malware, 
ransomware, banking trojans, or even more sophisticated threats. The only limit is the creativity and malicious intent of the attacker. Interestingly, this exploit only worked on the Android version of Telegram. ESET researchers tested it on both the Telegram web client and the Telegram desktop client for Windows, and in both cases, the exploit failed to work. This is because these platforms handle a file differently, treating it as a multimedia file with a .apk4 extension instead of an executable .apk file. While we don't know much about them, ESET researchers managed to uncover some interesting details. The seller, who used the handle Ancredo, had been active on the same underground forum since at least January 11, 2024. In addition to selling this Telegram exploit, they were also advertising an Android Crypto as a service, claiming it was fully undetectable by antivirus software. Services like Cryptors, which help malware evade detection, are sold alongside exploits like Evil Video. This cybercrime as a service model makes it easier than ever for less technically skilled individuals to launch sophisticated attacks. Just a week later, on July 11th, Telegram released version 10.14.5, which patched the vulnerability. In this updated version, when someone tries to share an APK file, it's correctly displayed as an application in the chat review, not as a video. This simple change effectively neutralizes the evil video exploit. In the world of software security, that's a pretty quick turnaround. However, it's worth noting that the exploit had been available for sale since at least June 6th, giving potential attackers over a month to take advantage of it. Unfortunately, the evil video exploit is far from an isolated incident. Telegram has been increasingly used for malware activities and cybercrime over the past few years. In fact, a report released on January 31, 2024 by Guardia Lab researchers Oleg Zaitsev and Nari Tal paints a concerning picture. They describe Telegram as a bustling hub where seasoned cybercriminals and newcomers alike exchange illicit tools and insights creating a dark and well-oiled supply chain of tools and victims' data. The researchers go on to say that free samples, tutorials, kits, even hackers for hire, everything needed to construct a complete end-to-end -end malicious campaign can be found on Telegram. They have dubbed the platform as Camera's Paradise in a breeding ground for modern phishing operations. What's particularly alarming is Telegram's democratization of cybercrime. What used to be available only on invite-only forums and the dark web is now easily accessible via public channels and groups. According to the Guardian Labs report, threat actors can mount a mass phishing attacks for as little as $230 using tools and services available on Telegram. That's less than the cost of a fancy dinner for two. But it gets worse. In April 2023, Kaspersky revealed how phishers were creating Telegram channels to educate newbies about phishing. They even advertise bots that can automate the process of creating phishing pages to harvest sensitive information like login credentials. One such malicious Telegram bot is called Telecopy, also known as Classic Scam. This bot can craft fraudulent web pages, emails, and SMS messages to help threat actors pull off large-scale phishing scams. The Guardian report goes into detail about how easy it is to construct a phishing campaign using resources available on Telegram. They found that the building blocks for such campaigns are readily available, often at very low prices or even for free. These kits make it possible to set up scam pages, host them on compromised WordPress websites, and use backdoor mailers to send out convincing phishing emails. These backdoor mailers are particularly insidious. They are PHP scripts injected into already infected but legitimate websites. This allows the scammers to send emails using the legitimate domain of the exploited website, effectively bypassing spam filters. As the Gario researchers point out, this situation creates a dual responsibility for website owners. Not only do they need to protect their own business interests, but they also need to ensure their platforms aren't being used as unwitting accomplices in phishing operations. Telegram hosts bulk datasets containing valid email addresses and phone numbers, referred to as leads. As the Guardia researchers note, these leads can be incredibly specific, tailored for any region, niche, demographic, specific company customers, and more. 
every piece of personal information adds to the effectiveness and credibility of these attacks. But here's where it gets really disturbing. Once the cyber criminals have collected stolen credentials, they can monetize them by selling them to other criminal groups as logs. This can net the threat actors a tenfold return on their investment. It's a lucrative business model, with social media account credentials selling for as little as a dollar, while banking accounts and credit cards can fetch hundreds of dollars, depending on their validity and associated funds. The Guardio researcher's bottom line is chilling. Unfortunately, with just a small investment, anyone can start a significant phishing operation, regardless of prior knowledge or connections in the criminal underworld. This democratization of cybercrime presents a significant challenge for cybersecurity professionals and law enforcement alike. It's no longer just skilled hackers we need to worry about. Now, anyone with a bit of cash and ill intent can potentially launch a damaging cyber attack. Have you ever encountered a suspicious file or message on Telegram or other messaging apps? Share your experience in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.